Well, welcome back on this Sabbath day. How are we doing today? Are we doing good? Was that some good worship tonight? Was it good? It was good worship, wasn't it? It was good. It was long, but it was good worship. We've got a few folks out sick, so keep them in prayer. Had the flu going around a little bit this week down here, or last week actually, so. Oh, I'm excited about tonight's message. Actually, I don't have my right glasses, but the reading glasses will work. But uh, I'm excited about tonight's message. I'm excited. If you turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. If you need a Bible, there's some Bibles there in the back. Cody will give you one. Got a lot of smiles tonight. That's good. It's always good. Well, folks, let's start with some prayer if we could. You want to start with some prayer? Lift them up, holy hands, he says. Lift up, holy hands, he says. Father God, we praise you and we thank you for today. Father God, we give you all the glory, precious God, for this last week in our lives, Father. Father God, you are everything, Father God. And Father God, I pray for your words tonight and not my own, precious God. You bring everything. I don't bring anything except a willing vessel. And Father God, I praise you in the mighty name of your Son. I pray for these men and women out here. Father God, if anyone's sick, that they be healed in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray that this word is received, precious God, the way I received it. In Jesus' name. And we said what? Amen. 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 This week's message, when I first got it, was on Wednesday. I was actually awake for this one. But I was walking to the water, the water canister inside the house, and I got linseed oil. And I'm like, linseed oil? What's that, Lord? Linseed oil? I'm like, linseed oil? What's that got to do with anything? Anyway, I asked her what it was, and she said it's for paintings. They use for painting sometimes. But anyway, in the Bible, linseed oil was used for making flax. For making flax for linen robes is what they made out of linseed oil. They actually crushed it and made flax out of it. So anyway... Flax was the most important plant fiber in the Bible because it was used to make linen. The scientific name of flax is linen. I'm not going to try and say the last name, but it means most useful, okay? So I started reading through the Bible, and linen's mentioned like, I don't know, 130 times. And so I started going through each one like the student I am, asking the Holy Spirit. And I finally got to Revelation 19 at the end of the Bible, and the Holy Spirit just hits like, all right, you're in the right spot. Okay. All right, Lord, let me... I found the right one. So anyway, let's start... In Revelation 19, verse 1, it says, After these things I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. Amen? Verse 2, For true and righteous are His judgments, because He has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and He has avenged on her the blood of His servants shed by her. Verse 3, again, they said, Hallelujah, her smoke rises up forever and ever. Verse 4, and the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. Verse 5, then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you His servants, and those who fear Him, both small and great. Verse 6, and I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude the sound of many waters as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Verse 7, Let us be glad and rejoice and give Him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and His wife has made herself ready. Verse 8 is my focal point that I'm getting to. I'm getting to verse 8. That's why I read it all, but I'm getting to verse 8. That's where I'm going to. So listen up. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, Clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. You guys hear that? For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. And right, we're going to talk about righteousness and unrighteousness. We're going to find that out. All righty. This message is called, Who is able to stand before God? Who is able to stand before God? You don't have to answer. We're going to get to it. Turn your Bibles to Philippians 3. Philippians 3. We're going to talk about righteousness. We have no righteousness of our own. We have absolutely none. Not one of us brings a good thing before God. Not one of us. We're flesh and bones and we're filled with sin. 
So everybody in this room, not one of us can walk up to God and say, well, God, I'm good. The Bible says no one is good but God. So we need a Savior. We need God, right? It's His righteousness. It's not our own. And something I'm going to talk about tonight, so many times that people get into church for a little while and they start getting a little bit of weight under their belt, they're doing good, they're studying, hey, it's coming along. All of a sudden, it's happened to me as well, there's a self-righteousness that starts to bow up. Well, I've got more knowledge than you, I'm more holier than you, I'm without blame, I'm this, I've repented, you know, right? Do we see that in the churches? Yes, we even see it in the churches back then. They're like whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones, that was a the Pharisees and Sadducees, right? So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Don't forget where you came from the first time you cried out to God. Don't forget where you were at. Because when you cried out to God that first time and said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Would you forgive me? Would you save me? You were broken in a mess just like anyone else in this room. They may not tell you that, but there's people in this room all the time. They're always going through trials, including myself. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. None of us are. Not one of us is righteous, right? No one is. We're going to read that scripture as well. I don't want to get to it too soon. Anyway, Philippians 3, verse number 1. This is Paul talking. He says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. And for me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Verse 2, Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation, for we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. I've got no confidence in this flesh, only in God. I wouldn't even be up here speaking if it wasn't for God. I wouldn't come up here. No way. Public speaking, forget that. I don't want to do it. i got to have Christ with me and in me, or I can't do it. I'm just telling you, being truthful with you. I couldn't do it without Him. I can't even exist without Him, right? Breathe, walk, talk, anything. Anyway, where where are we at? Verse 4, it says, Though I might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks... He may have confidence in the flesh. I more so. This is Paul talking. Verse 5. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee. Verse 6. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Verse 7. But one things were gained to me. These I counted lost for Christ. So everything who we think we are, and when we come to Christ, they're all lost. Everything. All the things we put our stake in, if it's not God, our hope in God, all those other things don't mean nothing to God. It's us coming and saying, Lord, I need a Savior. Here I am, use me. Whatever you want to do, do it. But if I come and say, Lord, I've got all these special talents, do you want me? (laughs) I've got no special talent He wants. He brings the foolish to confound the wise. That's what He does. You have no righteousness of your own. You have none of your own. I have none either. Last night I was laying there, we are up in Tehachapi, in this little trailer we're staying in at Bright Lake, it's probably like, what, 29 feet long? So I go in there and I shut the door, and one of her friends called who's upset about some stuff that she knew, and so I go in there and shut the door, and I'm crying out to God, Lord, about this message, and I'm talking to Him, and all of a sudden the tears just come, man. And the Lord was letting me know, He goes, you know what, you ain't nothing special, don't think that you are. You bring nothing special. I called you, and I filled you with my Son, the Holy Spirit. I filled you. You don't do nothing on your own. You don't do anything on your own. And I was sitting there sometimes. We get these eyes, and we look at other people and want to make these rash judgments. And You're condemned. I got you. You're condemned, every one of you, right? Right? Do we do that? Or we look at other people. We compare ourselves among ourselves. And I'm thinking, my, and one of my hardest issues is driving with other people. I used to be able to write them tickets when they frustrated me with their bad driving. Now I can't. So now, now, of course, we were coming home today, and I'm like, all right, I'm not going to say anything about anyone's driving. I'm just going to, (laughs) yeah. So the very last stretch, we were coming down Comanche, and some guy's doing 40 mile an hour in a 55. There's 25 cars behind him. And we're just sitting there like, (laughs) I'm not sure if the guy has foster farms on the side of his car, says he's carrying eggs or something. But anyway, he was driving really, really slow. I and mean, Danny said something. She's like, man, that guy's, why is he driving so slow? And I was like, I don't know. I didn't bite, though, and start kind of, you know, getting frustrated with him. I was like, eh. We actually drove by him, and he was yawning. So maybe he was tired. Maybe something was going on in his life I don't know anything about. But that could be me and you, right? Could it be us? Something could be going on we don't know nothing about? I don't know, but God knows. Anyway, 
So a lot of times, don't ever be self-righteous. It's not going to help anybody. God loves humility. God loves humility. He can work with that. He can work with that. Okay, where were we at? Verse number 8. Verse number 8. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Verse 9, and be found in him not having my own righteousness. Not having my own righteousness. You guys hear that? Not having your own. He didn't call you and say, you know what? That guy right there has got it. I got to have him on my team. Not at all. You came in sorrow and brokenness and repentance to God. That's how you came to him. That's how we all came to God. He wants us to recognize that he's righteous. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. So we get our, fa- and our righteousness through what? Through faith in Christ. That's where our righteousness comes from. If we believe who Christ says He is, right? The Son of God, He came, He redeemed us, He died on the cross, He rose on the third day, He seated on the right hand of the Father, He covered all of our sin debt. It's covered. Do you guys believe that? We have victory through Christ, not through none of us. We don't get the victory ourselves. Christ gets the glory. We don't get the glory. It's His and His alone. Amen? Amen. We don't get to be the quarterback on the team, folks. We're players on the team, but we don't call the plays He does, right? Everybody can't be quarterback. I used to coach when I was a, many years ago, and everybody lined up, and all their kids were the best quarterback. You'd have like 10 kids. One could throw it like two yards, and one throw it sideways, and and of course, all the dads, he's really good. He, you know, it's the next Joe Montana. You know? <laughs> it was, everybody, a lot of times when we look at ourselves, we want to puff up and boast in ourselves of all the things we've done, right? And somebody from the world, you'll notice really fast from your past life, if they come up, oh man, they'll start to boast in, this, in themselves. There's nothing wrong with sharing stories. But sometimes people will come up and, well, I caught the biggest fish at Pismo about five years ago. It was a record over there. And, I'm the tallest girl. You know, just there's always something. Have you ever noticed that? The toppers, they call them toppers. They always top you with everything. If you caught three fish, they caught four, right? I mean, you've read the Bible twice. They've read it 52 times, right? Right? You guys have ran into them. Come on, they're in the churches. You know you have. You have ran into them. And it's all of us as well. Anyway, verse number 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection of the dead. Let's get one thing straight here. We bring nothing to God. Our intellect, our looks, our skills, our knowledge, our actions, our good deeds, our patience, our money, always comparing ourselves to others. Who's the best, the brightest? Your choice. Stop it with a self-righteousness, including me. Stop it with self-righteousness. It's not going to get you anywhere. There's nothing wrong with correction in kindness and in love. But don't ever think that you're better than someone else because when you do, you take heed lest you fall, right? Be very careful when you start bringing someone else down. You're going to fall flat on your face. Be very careful. I've seen it happen. Are overly critical. And I'm guilty of all those things. Everyone, I'm guilty of all of them. I'll tell you, I'm guilty of all of them. There's times I have to put myself in check. There's times i got to get along with God and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm looking at this person, and not with your eyes, with my eyes. And why is this person falling again? What's going on, Lord? It's, man, I've talked to them, and I've shared, the, you know, I've shared the verses, and I've prayed with them, and we've cried together, and I've loved on them. And Lord, but we're only men and women, right? We're not God. God does that. He brings the change, does he not? He brings the change. We don't bring any change. We can water. We can plant the seed. We can do all those things. But it's up to them whether or not they receive the word of God, whether it's true. Right, look at Romans 1. Turn your Bibles there. While you're turning here, I'm going to ask you a few questions. You don't have to answer. Just listen. How many people have you saved? How many people have you saved? Zero. <laughs> You haven't saved anybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the best pastor in the world. Even Christ had one of his guys walk away from him, Judas, for some money. 
He was the best preacher ever. You know what I mean? But we've saved nobody. You haven't saved a single soul. I haven't either. God did that. If someone gets saved, it's God's work, not mine. He may use one of us to go share with somebody, but it's up to that person and God together for them to cry out to God and receive Christ. Right? Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall want, shall be saved. But you didn't save them, and I didn't save them. Get that straight. We didn't save anybody. Because I've had people in the past, I've saved 22 people. I'm like, dude, you haven't saved anyone. You didn't save no one. God does the saving. We just bring the Word of God, and we share. But we don't save anybody. Okay. How many people have you condemned? Have we all done that? Have we all condemned people? You bet we have. The flesh rears its head and you start doing this. I'm going to rip this person apart. I'm going to be overly critical. I'm going to find every flaw that I can find and I'm going to shred them. Right? Do we do that? Yes, we do. Is that a problem? Yes, it is. It's a big problem. It's a big problem for all of us. Every time you open your mouth, be very cautious on what comes out of your mouth. Those words you can't get back. You can say sorry all you want, but you can't get them back once they come off the tongue. They're gone, right? They're like darts. They're like arrows. If you say something that's encouraging, yes, you can share the truth with somebody, but do it in such a way where the person knows that you love them. And don't go up and slap them upside the head with a King James and tell them how worthless they are. It's probably not going to bring them to God. It's probably not going to happen. You just make them mad and they'll start swinging at you. It's probably not going to happen. Yeah, there's a self-righteous spirit that God hates. Do you build others up or find their flaws? Are you the only one who has the perfect knowledge of the Bible? I'm not. I know I'm not. Are you? Anybody here the only one? Or whoever's watching? I've got perfect knowledge of the Bible. None of us do. You have to know the gospel. That's the most important, right? Would you guys agree? All those other things are called sanctification. and You grow in God. And yes, you learn doctrines in the Bible. You do. But God's the Holy Spirit, right? And He will come in and teach you and show you, right? But so many times we get in these little matches with other people. And nope, we're going to strive over this word for the next two months. And my meaning is this and your meaning is this. And we're going to have these debates back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it's not helping anyone, is it? It's not edifying either side. It just turns into an argument. Let's focus on what's important. Lifting up God. Lifting up Christ's name. Let's lift Him up and all men will be drawn to Him. But if you ever begin to lift yourself up, what's going to happen? It ain't going to work out well. Turn your Bibles to... Uh, let's see. You're at Romans 1 already. Our, our Romans 1.16... For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. You've got to believe. We've got to believe that God is who He says He is. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. Verse 17. For in the righteousness of who? For in the righteousness of who? God! It doesn't say Brian there or Cody or Danny. or It doesn't say our name there. For in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by what? That's your personal faith with God. Not your neighbor's. You don't, want, you don't have enough faith for this miracle, so right now this guy's leg's not going to grow back. Come on. Seriously. People do that? Your faith is not as strong as mine. And how does your faith increase? By stepping out in faith and trusting in God, Right? And trusting in God, not someone else, not your neighbor, but trusting in God. He's who he says he is. And yes, I've seen many miracles. It wasn't because of me. It's because we were praying to the one who can do it. Not me, not Cody, not anyone else. Look at Romans 5.18. Romans 5.18. You guys doing all right? There's somebody sitting out here going, I'm righteous. You bet I'm righteous. <laughs> I hope not. I hope there isn't. And if I'm stepping on your toes, well, I stepped on my own first before I got to you. Romans 
Therefore, as though one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, right? That was Adam. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men. There was what? It was free. What did it cost you? Nothing. It's free. It's free. It didn't cost you anything. The free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. That's Adam. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made, what? Righteous. And we're righteous through who? Christ. We're only righteous through Christ. Remember that first verse I shared? Those linen robes, the righteousness of the saints? We'll find out about it. Just hang on to that one. Don't forget it. I'll get back to it. So Romans 5, we're going to keep going. Verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but when sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Verse 21. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He is our righteousness, is Christ. Amen? Turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Verse number 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. Many people boast in their appearance or they boast in the appearance of something. It's not a relationship with God. They're boasting in fleshly things, not heavenly things. Verse 13. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. Verse 14, for the love of Christ compels us because we judge us that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, verse 16, listen, therefore from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Did you guys hear that? Don't regard anyone according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. That's Cody's favorite verse. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing the trespasses to them, and has committed us the word of reconciliation. Did you guys hear that? Keep listening. Verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. It's through God, we're pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf at reconcile to God. Verse 21, For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Did you guys hear that? He took our sin, we took His righteousness. His righteousness. We traded. He got all my sin, He got a bunch. That's horrible. So all of us, all of our sin was put on Christ. He gave us His righteousness. Is that amazing? And it was free. And it was free. And talk about love, huh? Talk about love. That's, man. Let's look at Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. And if you guys ever, for instance, saw somebody come up here week after week, and there they are again up there praying, man. Oh, they must be caught up in a lot of stuff. Have you guys ever seen that? There he goes, needing some prayer again. That person's a mess. And there's these other people who are hidden back here and they're all caught up in sin, but they're just, yeah, look at them. Right? 
So every time you see a brother or sister come up and say, man, I need prayer. I got this struggle going on. They're being vulnerable to all of you and saying, I got a problem. I need help. I've got an issue. I've got a weakness. I need God's grace and strength to get through this. We ought to be clapping our hands for that. Amen? When one sinner repents, what happens? The angels sing in heaven. When a sinner repents. That's amazing though, right? But that could be us up here. And it takes courage to walk up here and say, hey, I've got a problem. I've got this issue. That takes bold courage. You're being vulnerable and you don't care what all these people say, man. You just want God's presence in your life. You want God's love. You want to be changed. You want to be healed. You walk up here because you want Him. And yes, there will always be people who judge you. It's always going to happen. Can't get away from it. Can't get away from that. But I pray in this church that you always get the message, which I believe that you do, and I pray that it's always with love. I pray that it's always with love. Here we go. Luke 18, 9. It says, Also we spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves, this is Christ talking, and that they were righteous and despised others. You guys listen, you've heard it before. You'll hear it again. It says, Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Well, a Pharisee was very religious. They were attorneys. They knew the law, the Torah. They knew it very well and they followed it. And the other a tax collector, which they were sinful and hated. The Pharisee stood and prayed to himself, God, I thank you. I'm not like these other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes all I possess. And the, and the tax collector, the Pharisee, we saw him, right? He's comparing himself to this other man before God. He's a whitewashed tomb. He's full of sin. And he's sitting there calling out someone else while he's in there praying. Well, God, look at him, man. Compare us. God doesn't want you to compare yourselves to each other. No, he wants you to compare yourself to his son, Christ, and you fall short. That's who you compare yourself to, and you fall really short. So keep listening. It says, And the tax collector, standing afar, afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Verse 14, this is Christ. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. You will be picked up. If you come in humility to God, God can work with it. He can fix that. He can't fix if you come in arrogance, if you come with all the answers, or if you come with excuses. He can't fix it. But if you come and say, I don't have the answers, I don't know everything, but you do. I've got issues, Father God. I want to know you, or something's going on in your life. Bring it before God. He can fix it. I can. He can. We can pray together. All those things. But you have to trust in God. Right? Amen? We can't trust in ourselves. We've got to trust in God. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. You guys doing all right? I know my sermons are a lot faster than Cody's and probably shorter, but sometimes I just don't have a lot to say. But Sorry. <laughs> it's just the way he made me, I guess. Isaiah 61, verse 10. It says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord my soul, and she'll be joyful in my God, for He has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of what? Righteousness. He's covered me with His robe of righteousness. I got to put on Christ. I put on Christ. Isn't that awesome? When the Father looks at me, He's not seeing my filthy sin, my adultery, my lying, my drinking, and all that... And since I was a child, all the crazy stuff I ever did. He's looking at me and saying, ah, all my sins have been blotted out, cast as far as east is from the west, I've been forgiven. And he says, you're mine, come here. I won't remember none of it, it's gone. Is that awesome? Is that awesome? Sin's gone. 
And when we come to God in that situation, so many times we forget, like I shared earlier, we forget where we came from. Don't forget where you came from. Sinner and sinner in need of a Savior. I'm not righteous, but He is. Right? I need His righteousness to survive. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, as a bride adorns herself with jewels, for as the earth brings forth its bud, and the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause what? Righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. So the Lord will cause righteousness. Right? Who will? (laughs) All right. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah 64. And this is kind of a gross scripture a little bit, but I want to share you the way it's shared in the Bible. Okay? So bear with me. Isaiah 64, 6. But we are all like an unclean thing, all, and all of our righteousness are like filthy rags. And what that means there, filthy rags, is like a woman's menstrual cycle product. That's what it's like. If you look up the word, that's what it's called in the Bible. You go back in the Strong's and study it in the Hebrew, you're going to see that. And you're like, okay. But God said it was like a filthy rag. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So all of our righteousness is as filthy rags to God. Did you guys hear that? All of our righteousness is as filthy rags. So like I said, we bring nothing to the table. We bring the fact that we believe. Faith in God. Nothing else. Your works don't save you. Your deeds don't save you. Your giving don't save you. None of that saves you. Do you guys hear that? None of it. But you're going to be a new creation and you're going to be changed in those things you'll want to do. You'll want to do those things out of what? Because Christ is living in you. You'll want to. Let's look at Zechariah 3. And I'm not sure if you guys have heard this one from the Old Testament, but it's pretty good, actually. It's a good uh, foreshadowing of Christ a little bit. Zechariah 3, man, we got Joshua. We got Zechariah who has a vision. He has a vision of Joshua. And you've got Satan who's accusing him because he's got on filthy rags of his sin. The accuser's trying to tear him up. It's in the Old Testament. And of course, we've got Joshua, man, who led Israel in, right? He won all the battles, fought all the fights. He listened to everything that God said. He made a few mistakes along the way. But Joshua needed a what? A Savior. Joshua needed a Savior as well. So listen. Zechariah 3. It says, Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Verse 2. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Did you guys hear that? He's clothed in filthy garments. Verse 4, Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. He's talking about Joshua, who he had called. He's going to remove his iniquity. He's going to take it out. I'm so glad the Lord did that for us, man. I can't even, man. If it was based on deeds and stuff, could you imagine? It'd be horrible. We'd be keeping track on a computer. I did this. I couldn't imagine. Anyway. Verse number five. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. And so they put a clean turban on his head and they put the clothes on him and the angel of the Lord stood by. Verse 6, Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my command, then you shall also judge my house. And likewise, have charge of my courts. I will give you places to walk among those who stand here. Verse 8, Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. Who's that? Who's the branch? That's the Messiah. (laughs) 
I'm bringing forth my servant the branch, for behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon the stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. So you guys hear that? So he was talking about the branch who would come. And of course, man, if we don't man, abide in the tree, what would happen? If I'm part of a limb and I'm not abiding in the tree, the root one happens. If I'm cut off, I die. I got to abide in the tree, right? And turn your Bibles to Romans 3. Romans 3. Romans 3. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 3, verse 10, it says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Did you guys hear that? Sorry to break it to you, man. There's people out here who thought they were righteous. Well, you just found out you're not. Sorry, that you're not. That's the word of God. That's truth. That's truth. Not one is righteous. No, not one. Verse 11, there is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. Verse 12, they've all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Verse 13, their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. You guys hear that? Watch out for our tongues. We say a lot of stuff that shouldn't come off of it, right? Well, it's the first thing that came to my mind. So I said it, now I feel better, right? Well, now I feel better after I said it. What happens then? You better get on your face and repent, right? Be careful what comes off your mouth. And am I guilty of that? You bet I am. You bet I am. Verse 13, their throat is an open tomb with their tongues. They have practiced deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. They don't have any fear of God. Now, if you don't believe there's a God, you won't have any fear of God. But if you believe there's a God that He sees everything and knows everything and knows your heart's intentions, you'll have a holy, righteous fear of God. You will. He's a righteous God. Verse 19. Now we know that whenever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no fat, our flesh will be justified in His sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Verse 21. But now righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and all who believe there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Did you hear that? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Verse 24 being justified freely by His grace and through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25, whom God set forth as appropriation by His blood through faith to demonstrate His righteousness because in His forbearance God has passed over the sins that were previously committed. Verse 26, to demonstrate at the present time His righteousness that He might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Verse 27, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law of works? No, and by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude in that a man is justified by faith apart from deeds of the law. Did you guys hear that? And so you're justified by what? Your faith. Last page. Turn to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I got a new Bible up here. Cody gave me, I think, last January, and I finally got laid mine down. It was kind of torn up. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 1. It says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill you my joy, that, and you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Man, do we do that? Or do we walk around going, I'm better than them, I'm better than them, oh, I'm better than you, I'm better, than, right? Right? Do we do that? Yep, we do. Sure do all the time. 
Once with this lady, man, handing me these fries at Burger King, man, that's the only job she can get. Look at the, you know what I mean? Do we do that? They're making 15 bucks an hour, right? <laughs> do we do that? We condemn all the time, just like that. There's nothing wrong with righteous anger, the Bible says, as long as it doesn't cause you to sin. So it's a real, <laughs> it's a real hot place there to be in that place with righteous anger. Not saying it can't happen, but you better not sin when you do it. You better not get in your flesh and say something you shouldn't say. There are things that are wrong we have to say something about. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's a way to do it. Okay. Verse number four. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Christ had no reputation. He didn't exalt himself. He didn't walk around with a camera, one of those go cams, wherever he went. Yeah, I was at the store today and prayed for another guy. There he is, you know, right? And so many times me and Cody's gone out, man, we would never record, would we? We wouldn't take our cameras. We wouldn't record. We just didn't want to go, hey, look, it's me again. Let me do my hair or something first. Go ahead. Hit it. Action, right? No. If you want to do it, you do it because you want to do it. man. And don't do it to be seen by other people man, so they can lift you up. Do not do it for that reason. Those are the wrong reasons. But made himself of no reputation and took up on him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Verse 8, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Verse 9, Wherefore God also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, all things in heaven, all things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Did you hear that? Who will be able to stand before Christ? You're going to hit your face. You're going to tremble. Yes, there's a great white throne judgment that says standing before God, but you might study that. When we come before God... His holiness, your face is going to be prostrate on the floor throughout the entire Bible. You can go back and look. People are on their face trembling from His holiness. Because He's holy. We're not. Be you holy for I am holy. Only with Christ in us, man, can we even understand what He's even talking about a little bit. Turn your Bibles to Revelation 1. Let's get into Revelation 1 for a second. I'm almost done. You guys bear with me there. Like, man, this guy's putting me to sleep. Revel <laughs> He's got that monotone voice. It puts me to sleep. He had to be selling that stuff for those people who can't sleep. It's his voice at night, yeah. Uh, maybe I do. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I've messed my calling. Anyway, verse number 13, Revelation 1, 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks... One like unto the Son of God, or man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like, were as a flame of fire. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice is the sound of many waters. Verse 16, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And here's John, who knows Jesus, who walked with Jesus. What does he do? And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He fell at his feet like he was dead. John walked with him. And John was the one that Jesus loved. Right? You read the Bible, it's what it tells you. He had a lot of love for him. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, for I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen, and have the keys of hell and death. Did you guys see that? So John, and when he saw Christ, boom. He fell on his face. He worshipped him. Let's look at uh, Romans 10. Turn your Bibles to Romans 10. Romans 10. Uh, 
I'm not going to cover the whole chapter. Just take too long because I've got just a couple more left. I don't want to go too long. Romans 10, verse number 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Believe if you hear that. Verse 5, For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law, that that man which doeth those things shall live by them. Verse 6, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, and who shall ascend to heaven? And that is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the death? And for that is to bring Christ up from the dead. Verse 8, But once saith the word is night, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9, And that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. Verse 10, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11, For the Scripture says, Whosoever believeth on Him shall not be ashamed. you guys hear that? All right. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 23. Matthew 23. So what time we got? Okay, let's start in verse number 10. This is Christ talking. He says, Neither you be called masters, for one is your master, even Christ, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Did you hear that? And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Did you guys hear that? So it's written one more time right there again. So Christ came as a servant. And he didn't come to be looked upon to be, oh, look at me. He didn't. He came as a man. And he walked this place as a man. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It says in verse 26, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, For you see your calling, brethren, and how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, and not many noble are called. Verse 27, verse 27, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised has God chosen. Yes, and things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. That no flesh should glory in His presence. You guys see that? No flesh should glory in God's presence. We don't glory in ourselves. Don't walk around patting yourself on the back. I'm not saying you can't say, hey man, good job on something. But don't walk around boasting in your own flesh. Do not do that. Verse 30, And but of Him... Are you in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption? You guys hear that? Last verse. Turn your Bibles to Romans 13. Romans 13. You guys doing all right? Last verse. Somebody brought some cake out there. I don't know what it's for, but anyway, there's some cake out there. I saw it. No one looked up. I saw a cake out there. (laughs) <laughs> but the word's better than cake would you guys agree the word's better than cake all right i'm going to share about 15 more verses you guys all right with it? No, i'm just kidding <laughs> like no i'm going to stop romans 13 11 romans 13 verse 11 and do this knowing the time that now is is high time to awake out of sleep for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed Verse 12, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, men, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Verse 13, but let us walk properly as in the day, 
not in revelry and drunkenness and in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. Here's the verse we're getting to. Here's the important one, verse 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its, its lust. Put on what? Put on Christ Jesus. Don't put you on. You died to you. Put on Christ Jesus. Amen. Cody, you, you want to say anything? Okay. Is there anybody in this room besides me who has issues with self-righteousness occasionally? Or all the time or every day? Is there anyone here? Come on up. We're going to pray together. I'll be the first one to say, I do. I have problems with it. Lift my hands up. Yep, I do. I got problems. If you got any issues with self-righteousness, if you find yourself, like I said, a righteousness in yourself, and you're like, this ain't of God, this is me being overly critical or whatever else, if that's you, come on up and let's pray. And yes, I'm going to come down to your level because we're equals here. <laughs> Anyone else? You want to help Sarah come up? Folks, anyone else want to come up? It's all right, man. We won't... Hey, we won't shame you. It's okay. We won't shame you. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I do. I have problems with it all the time, actually, with my driving. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I shouldn't be driving, probably. But I just I take the... I have one every car on the road. Just don't have to be around them. Yeah, I had to take the bus. Probably best for me. You guys ready? You guys want to hold hands? Hey, Gloria, you want to come over and hold Sarah's hand? Thank you. I have a little circle here. Father God, we come before you, precious God. And Father God, would you remove the spirit of self-righteousness from us, Father? Father, we pray for Christ to live inside of us, Father. We pray for humility, Father. We pray for humbleness, Father. We pray for, Father, love of our brother and sisters, Father God. And just, Father, to do things that you want us to do, Father God. And Father, strengthen us when those words began to rear up in our mind or our hearts or our tongue. Father, we start to say something that doesn't edify, Father God. And Father God, we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Well, thank you guys for coming up. All right, man, you get some extra cake, too. The ones that came up first, go and line up. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs>